All right. Uh, hello, OAS family. It is time for another book review, and today we are going to be reviewing uh, this book, The Lingnan School Painting by Wang Li Fu. And uh, this is a very interesting book. It's an it's sort of like a historical um, collection of uh, various Lingnan artists, various Lingnan masters, or artists who um, to whom the creation of the Lingnan style has been attributed to. Um, and it sort of goes through them in kind of a historical order and paints the relationships between them. Um, and so the book itself is bound in this sort of traditional Chinese style. So it's actually reversed from what we're used to in the West. So it actually opens from this side and progresses this way. Uh, the general statistics are the book is eight and a quarter inches wide by 11 and three eighths inches tall. And the total number of pages is approximately 141. So I had got a special guest uh, uh, for this um, book review. My mother is here uh, and she is going to elucidate some of the, uh, explain some of the pages um, that have some historical context. Uh, so I'm just gonna hand this off to her and we will go ahead and start going through the book. First, um, what does Ling Nan mean? Ling means mountain, Nan means south. So the school, this style of painting is started from Canton, the province, uh, which is uh, back the mountain facing the ocean. So this particular school's artist uh, was early influenced by the West. And so right now it's very popular um, in the West because um, the influence from the West is kind of combined East and West together. This book, it's going to start with the artist called Ju uh, Chao. And you can see this uh, first uh, uh, a few pages of his painting. His painting is still pretty traditional. Why the book name the starter of the Lingnan School by them is because the pioneer of the Lingnan School artists, uh, they actually call them Lingnan um, School artists are the are his student. So the first section of this book talk about two artists. They are actually cousins. One called Ju Chao, one called Ju Lian. And Ju Chao is older, so it comes uh, first. And then after uh, him, then will be Ju Lian. And um, so, um, so the the book itself doesn't have um, any text in China, uh, in English except the title of the painting. So I'm going to go through as much as I can about to tell you what it says in the book. So you can see this this page is talk about the 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 origin of the Lin Nai school and then the Lin Nai school style and says that it's very colorful, it's very spontaneous and then would name the three starting the pioneer artists that uh, have done uh, starting the school of Lin Nai which later on will go more elaborate. The three um, artists calling the pioneers of Linnan School is Gao Jian Fu, Gao Qi Feng. Those two are brothers. And then later on, there is Chen Shu Ren, which is Gao Jian Fu's student. So those three are they consider the pioneer of Linnan School. And Gao Jian Fu and Gao Qi Feng, they were the student of Ju Lian. And then Ju Lian is a younger cousin of Ju Chao. So they named Ju Chao and Ju Lian as the inspiring of the school. So you can see the this page, 
Ju Cao's work are pretty detailed, traditional style. And then at the very beginning, those um, artists, they mostly are um, copy from the older paintings and uh, previous uh, artists of history paintings, and then do some changes on their own. But they don't paint from actually um, uh, live work. So later on, this school developing are the first school from China, uh, Chinese history are actually painting from the true scenery or um, the actually uh, subject of real subject. So you said that these two, the sort of inspiring artists, the cousins, they lived in the Ming Dynasty. Uh, and then you said they were mostly copying uh, from older the, artists from the Song Dynasty. From the Song Dynasty. They call boneless fine line style. And then here's a couple fan uh, shaped paintings from those two artists. That's good. Uh, from Ju Tao. So we are still looking at the first artist. So this is still, we are following the first artist. So we have this white hibiscus on the right hand side and then on the left hand side there's a catfish. So it, you can see that they are painting on the size paper and what they call as boneless of fine line. Gongbi style. So you can see they are starting to move away from the line work and that's that's the starting of the picture that is going to develop into the future Linai school. So we have the right hand side there's a peonies painting and on the left hand side a painting called Drunken Hibiscus. And then twin grits on the right and then lilies on the left. And then this lychee painting here on the right hand side and then the left hand side it's a uh, mountain dweller. C can you um, tell me a little bit about the calligraphy in that painting? And uh, this particular writing is about describing of the um, lychee and how beautiful they are and then um, that kind of uh, brought um, his um, relationship to his uh, uh, homeland. And then on the left hand side we have a painting feature featuring a bird that's called Mountain Dweller. On the right, Night Fragrance. And then on the left, Plum Blossoms. And then we are starting Ju Lian, the second artist of this book which is the younger cousin of the Ju Chao, okay. the first artist. So we have this uh, piece here, which is the hibiscus and the caddy did. Then Narcissus and Rock, Climbing Rose, Hibiscus. You can see that his work um, involved a lot of line work, but um, um, very traditional, but the, the his line work start become bolder. So this is New Year's greetings, and then uh, a close up shot of this element here. You can see that his line work is already pretty loose and not very careful, like the um, the pre the the artist that that be before them. So what we have is kind of a transition where the older traditional paintings, um, I, I guess the, they, they sort of originated as kind of a form of record keeping. So there was kind of an emphasis on detail and, um, and accuracy. And then now as we uh, go on and we start getting into the development of the Lingnan style, we see more artistic expression. Um, on the right hand side, this is called floral bouquet. And then this is a detail shot here of this section of the painting. Uh, and then this is um, Narcissus. 
and then a closer shot of it here, detail. On the right hand side, it's hydrangea and visitors. So it's a butterfly and hydrangea pa uh, painting. And then on the left, we have building a wasp's nest. And we have uh, peonies on the right hand side and on the left hand side, sparrows and corn stalks. So this is um, starting for the third artist of this book called Gao Jianfu. And he would be actually considered the pioneer of the Nine School. You can see that this particular painting, the corn and then the stalk of the corn, it's very spontaneous, loose. There's no defined line. The um, he Gao Jianfu is the student of Julian. And then it says uh, Gao Jianfu is the student of uh, Ju Lian, and they have uh, six brothers. And then uh, Jianfu and Qi Feng, that were the famous artists that who are starting the Lingnan School. And um, he went to uh, Aumen, which is the, the the island next to Hong Kong and several years so 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 he is uh, he has studied uh, all the western artists like picasso and so he had access to the west um culture and then he also start writing and preaching about this particularly uh, modern style of painting he said that um the major difference between the ancient style painting versus what he is trying to do um, is idea is different. So he has taught uh, quite a few um, later very accomplished artists. And so they consider he is the grandfather of the Lin Nan school. And we have paintings here, this figure painting of like a flute player uh, and then um, spinner in spring which is a spider work and then this landscape piece called roaring cascades you can see this particular landscape piece is still has a lot of traditional influence and then he is also is the starting relating that he said that he used his painting style to write, and then he used his calligraphy foundation to paint. So you can see this particular piece of work that is definitely demonstrate this. So we have this uh, Bodhidharma figure here, and then a wisteria here, and then this painting that he's calling Three Longevities. This particular wisteria piece is very abstract uh, from the time, you know, consider the time when he was in. Then uh, this landscape painting on the right called Mountain Path. And then on the left, uh, we have this painting of an eagle called Watchful Eyes. This eagle, um, eagle that, that later on a lot of Linan artists has tried to mimic and changing in their own, but then this is the starting. And this is really nice. We have this sort of very selected color palette here where it's kind of almost has like a monochromatic feel where there's a lot of ink, but then there are just these uh, couple chosen colors to, to highlight um, really uh, stylistic. And then we have a couple uh, landscape paintings. Well, I mean, this is uh, a landscape painting here on the right called uh, Mount uh, Kunlun after rain. And then on the left-hand side, we have a detailed shot of just the tree element in that painting. On the right, uh, this uh, painting called Winter very simple but very well composed 
Uh, and then on the left hand side, we have a mountain path in Sichuan. And then on the right is ancient castle. And on the left hand side is a painting called Trekking at Dawn. And this is a painting of a tiger called Moon Thunder. So uh, next year, Chinese New Year, is the year of the tiger. So it is a good time to be collecting inspiration for tiger. And this is, uh, tiger is uh, a very common um, subject among Lingnan artists. So this is one from the founder of the school. And then here we have a picture of like a hunting fox called Strengthen by the Weak. And then on the left hand side, we have another tiger called Spirit of Kingship. And then Autumn Harvest on the right. And then on the left, we have a pumpkin. And then we have the entire painting here and with a detailed blow up of this pumpkin painting on the top. So on the right hand side, we have wild tendrils and then on the left hand side, uh, wild orchids. We have some figure paintings here. Taoist practitioner here on the right and then pity my reflection here on the left. And then over here, fish and fresh currants and iris and dragonfly. And we have white lotus on the right here and on the left, we have Loquats and Admirer. And then Fruit for the Market. So this book, they devoted a lot of pages to this Gao Jian Fu since he is the starting of the Ling Nai And you can, I can see the Western influence definitely in these two paintings. These uh, look very much like a hybrid between um, between like what you see in sort of like the in European uh, paintings in Western watercolor and then a Chinese style. Then we starting to the younger brother of Gao Jianfu, uh, is Gao Qi Feng, and um, he also have studied with. Uh, Ju uh, Yulian, um, he developed even more so um, than Gao Jianfu because he was the first uh, person in this group that actually went to study in Japan. And um, um, they study uh, from the Western artists and then they also uh, influenced by the Japan traditional way of painting and um, so um, when he was 17 he went to Japan to study and uh, which in that time you know it's it's unheard of it you actually go to a foreign country to study but you can see then that kind of create way that he's um, he's open-minded about how to paint and this painting here on the left hand side is called Tasting the Dawn. And then we have this white egret um, featured. The complete painting is here on the right called Dive Before the Downpour. And then on the left hand side we have a detailed shot. Zoom in of just the bird. You can see some of the flower elements in the background. And an eagle painting on the right, and then on the left we have doves gracing a pear bow. 
And then autumn conference on the right and then on the left hand side there's a detail of that painting showing um, uh, this particular part of the painting right there. And then on the right hand side we have uh, a painting called Ancient Hawk and then on the left hand side we have a close-up. You can see um, these really, really fine texture strokes that are used to capture the uh, feathers of the bird. And then here we have a picture called Moonstruck Gibbon and then a detail shot on the left. On the right, white mare in the first snow, and on the left we have mighty roar, another tiger composition. On the right hand side we have uh, the painting called Enraged Lion, and on the left hand side is Stallion in Autumn. And then, um, on the right hand side, we have Bodhidharma and then landscape painting. Then at the page 75, and it starts the third artist they consider as the pioneer of Lingnan School called Chen Shu Ren. I think that um, if everyone, can, this is his work and I think the detail about him is on the next page. So um, Chen Shu Ren is the three pioneer of the Lingnan school. Chen Shu Ren born in 1883 uh, to 1948. And uh, so um, at 17, and uh, he already went to study with Ju Lian, which is the second artist of this book. And, uh, um, and then in 1912, he went to Japan to study and uh, has accomplished with a, a bachelor degree in art that he, between the traditional art, uh, Chinese art, and then what he learned from Japan, he then developed his own style. He's not only um, very uh, accomplished in art, he also is a politician, that he has uh, followed the Sun Zhongshan, the, the starting of the Republic, and uh, as part of the team. So we have uh, this painting here on the left called Pine. And then on the right, we have a painting on the top called the Red Leaves and underneath Pear Blossoms in the Rain. So on the right hand side, Spring Colors in Lingnan. And on the left hand side, Willows and Swallows. And you can see between, as we transition between these three artists, there is definitely a very distinct change in style. And on the right hand side, we have a wintry little tune, left hand side, passing B, and magpie's address. And then on the right hand side, we have five old men peaks and then spring rains during planting. Left hand side, we have cascade in a distant lake. And then the waterfall here on the right and then on the left here among the clouds. So we have uh, geese and reeds here and then uh, returning swallows, rites of spring, and then on the far left here we have uh, peonies and admirers.
and then uh, Vernal Glow, Elephant Nose Mountain, and Autumn Clarity on the right. And then on the left, we have a tiger composition called Twin Roar. That's by Zhao Shang Ang. So now we are left um, Chen Su Ren going into Zhao Shao Ang, which is one of the most famous Lingnan school artists and uh, regarded into the West. The reason is that Zhao Shao Ang uh, even developed more uh, spontaneous loose style than the previous artists. And then he also very actively teaching 40 years. So he has had a lot of students then uh, he's the first one that came uh, to the West, uh, Europe and US to do his personal art shows. So, so he's a lot more well known in the West than the previous artists. So we, um, his book in our collection probably was one of the most popular albums that people purchase. All right, so here are some uh, more paintings by Zhao Sao An, and then you can see here, you start to see um, the, the style that has become kind of his signature, which is this loose, almost like chaotic uh, branch composition um, with, you know, selective detail um, uh, with, with insects and birds, but uh, a lot of uh, sort of free expression. And Zhao Shao Ang that uh, spent most his time in Hong Kong. Uh, and then so that make him much easier to travel than the people from China. And uh, so during the Cultural Revolution, he's very active because he it was not under the um, communist China's regime. So we have uh, white egrets and a lotus pond here on the right hand side and then a closer up shot of just the egrets here on the left. And then the joy of carp here on the right and then on the left hand side we have red blooms of Lingnan woods. And then as frost sets in here on the right and then on the left, uh, it's a frog, very uh, simple frog composition called Spring Pond. And you can see this nice technique where they render the, the um, different parts of the frog body with different levels of color intensity to suggest that uh, one part of uh, the frog is above the water and the other part is below. So we have uh, Mandarin ducks here on the right. And on the left hand side, we have peacock. Just some gorgeous uh, detail in the, the painting here of the peacock feathers. But then we have like some uh, loose expression of the background elements. So kind of a, a blended style painting there. Then on the right hand side, we have the gorges of Shu and then uh, night barges return and then American scene reminds of home. And then on the right hand side, we have a blurring of bees and then spring song here on the bottom. And then on the left hand side, we have, and the rains came uh, and uh, first snow. Then we have these uh, sort of six birds on a branch and five birds on a branch elements. Then over here we have Gourd and Tenants, and then Autumn Solace, which is a painting we featured in our uh, one of our earlier emails this week. And then After the Rain here on the upper right, uh, upper left, and then uh, On the Bow in the lower left. And then these splashes of color um, are really distinctive. Okay. 
So on the right hand side, uh, we have uh, Autumn Recitation here. And then on the lower right, we have Praying Mantis and Pray. And then here on the left, we have uh, Forlorn up at the top. And then at the bottom, we have Young Bamboo Shoot. And then uh, on the right, we have Peach Blossom Valley after rain. And then uh, and then we have this Kingfisher and Lotus painting on the lower right. And then on the left, we have Sing of Plum Blossoms Fragrance and Bright Flowers and a Happy Bird, these two paintings here on the left. Okay, Yang Shanshen is another uh, uh, an uh, artist from Ningnai School. So, by the way, all these artists are uh, born in Canton. Um, he has traveled in Taiwan, and uh, um, he also went to. Um, he also has heavily influenced by uh, the Japanese uh, artists and. Um, And he's very uh, well known for his animals that he seems does less landscape than most uh, Linan artists. So we have this painting here called Solo Flights. And then on the left-hand side, we have White Dove, Dawn's Master, and Cat. And then on the right, we have uh, Ancient Taoist Temple, this uh, really bright uh, lotus painting. Uh, and then this painting called Song Wu and Lady Pan Chin Lian. And then Returning Ore here. And then on the left hand side, we have the poet, the poet Dao Qing Chie. And then here we have frontal stair, picture of a rooster, painting of a rooster, sideways glance, uh, noiseless leap of a white cat, and then these two goldfish called silent watch. And then the mouse, buffalo, the tiger, the rabbit, the dragon, the serpent. And then transitioning over here to the left, we have the horse, the goat, the monkey, the chicken, the dog, and the pig. So we have a zodiac thing going on uh, where he, uh, these are a collection of paintings representing the animals of the Chinese zodiac. So Linan School is the first school that started to use semi-sized paper. You can see that it's very difficult to paint on complete raw paper. And then uh, it's also um, difficult to do it on complete size paper. So they are the first school like uh, this to have a paper made for them like Jinghe and Sammy sized uh, Shen paper. So here we have a picture called Making Music. Seven Sages in a, ba a Bamboo of the Bamboo Grove and Homeward Bound. And then uh, poet Xie Ling Yun's outing. Mountain Hamlet and Thoughts of Distant Mountains. And then Young Blooms on an Ancient Tree, Red Petals here, White Echoes here, and then Peonies Response down here on the left hand side, Lotus Pad and Friends. Uh, and a couple goldfish paintings on the lower left-hand side. 
Then Harvest Moon on the right, Bamboo Squirrels on the left, uh, Barnyard Play. And then on the left, we have Bee in Bloom and Chicks. And we started another artist called Oh Hao Nian. Oh Hao Nian uh, is a student of Zhao Shao Ang. And he is very well known uh, in Taiwan because he spent most of his um, life in Taiwan. He also um, has taught being a professor at our school in Taiwan. So Taiwan is almost all the um, people who are into art knows him. And, and we used to have an art album by him. Unfortunately, that way it's out of print. So if you want to collect his uh, work, um, this is the book to collect because this is the only book we have as a collection of his work. So we have the Tiger's Eye here, and then Eagle's Crest, and Royal Pear on the lower left. And then Descending Geese, Returning Sails, Mountain Village, and evening snow over the river. His work I'm most sought after is his landscape. And uh, you can see that this is the most collection of this book too. So uh, Autumn Moon over Lake Tunting. And then on the left, Evening Rains over Sao and Xiang. And then Evening Bell from the Mist and Shrouded Temple here on the left. And then on the far left, Evening Glow over the Fishing Village. So most of his work are done by uh, on the semi-sized Jinghe paper. So um, just if you want to mimic that, any other paper will be pretty difficult because you can see the background. You need to have some sizing to, um, to paint. And then the sudden swoop here on the right, and then on the left as day breaks, the crowing rooster. And then down here on the lower right, we have echoes of bird cries. And then crossing both pages that I could dwell within this landscape. And then we have the, this figure of this mythic, uh, ancient figure, Chong Kui, the demon queller, here on the right hand side, and then evening colors here on the left. So the last artist of this book is uh, Huang Lei Sen, and uh, he spent most of his um, um, time uh, in Hong Kong. And uh, uh, he's the only artist that in, in the Lingnan School who actually, uh, in the 1960s, he immigrated to the uh, U.S. and lived in San Francisco for the rest of his life. And um, so, um, so a lot of uh, Western um, people follow his work too. So we have this landscape that goes across two pages here called Spring and Hong Chao. And then Rains in Mount Li. And Sea of Clouds at Mount Wu Chi. Then morning glow at Jade Mountain, and then in this uh, on the lower here is Phoenix Mountain.
definitely seeing Western influences here in this work, but of course, with the ink and the brushes and the paper, um, it is also unmistakably Chinese. Uh, and then we have uh, Shenshang Mountain here, and then Sea of Clouds at Alisan Mountain here. And then on the left, we have a Morning in Xitao and Scaling the Highest Peaks, which is on the lower left. So that is pretty much it. So we have a limited amount of copies of this book in stock right now. The book is currently on sale because we used to have, we used to carry this book as kind of a textbook for one of our teachers and then they stopped teaching. So we have um, um, some leftover copies from when we used to keep this book on file. But as you can see, it is a lovely book and very uh, unusual in that we have a bunch of collected works from, a, from almost all the well-known masters uh, of the Lingnan style and this idea of, of uh, relating them historically and relationally to each other and how they influenced each other. Uh, and so it is kind of like an album of collected works. So you see a lot of uh, finished masterpiece level paintings. Um, and those are different from the paintings that are often featured in instructional books because uh, even my father, uh, Ningye, is like this where he'll paint, when he's painting for himself, he will paint a certain way. Um, and then when he has to teach, he purposely will simplify the subjects to, to make it more accessible to more people. So when you want to see that kind of masterpiece level um you know, paintings that have sold for uh, a, a lot of money and were really well regarded historically by uh, art um, aficionados and critics alike. It is uh, important to uh, have a resource like this. So we thank you very much for listening. Thank you to my mother for uh, coming along with me with this book review. Definitely did a wonderful job at providing us some insight um, into uh, uh, the various artists in these books. And we uh, make sure you like and subscribe for more content like this. And we wish you happy painting. Mm -hmm.